Okay, so you have turned back to what? The same production. Production, you have to, we have production in the long run. And production in what? In the short run. I go. In the short run, labor is fixed. In the long run, those with capital in labor. I go. Now, so production in the long run, which is with eight. So with production in the long run, it's basically based on what? Cobb Douglas production function, which is Q is equal to AL exponent alpha K in beta, where L is the labor, K is the capital. So where A is the output elasticity of labor, A, which is the alpha? Where beta is the output elasticity of what? Capital. Now, with some of the questions, you can actually interpret this idea. So with the interpretation, if the alpha plus the beta is equal to one, then the firm is experiencing constant returns to scale. Are you good? If alpha plus beta is equal to one, then the firm is experiencing constant returns to scale. Okay. Also, if alpha plus beta is less than one, then the firm is experiencing increase returns to scale or increasing returns to scale, I know. We also have if alpha, let's say alpha plus beta is greater than one, then the firm is experiencing decreasing returns to scale. I hope you are good. Okay. We have isoquant analysis. Now, with the isoquant, an isoquant shows the various combination of inputs, which is capital in labor, that produces the same level of output. So in the long run, if you are picking capital and labor, you are supposed to give you a fixed number of what quantity, are you okay, or level of output. So when there's capital, there's labor, there's quantity, capital is five, four, three, two, one, labor, one, two, three, four, five. Both the capital and labor combine giving you what? A fixed quantity. So you see, labor and capital, 10. The same, it follows up by two. So this actually defines the definition for what the isoquant analysis since they are going to produce the same level of output which is this okay so we use this to illustrate this diagram so that's our y axis our x axis our x axis will take what the labor our y axis which is the vertical side will take what our capital so that's how we actually do or we actually illustrate that that's how we do it okay now we have characteristic support, isoquant. Okay. It is downward sloping, as you can see. It's downward. It's downward sloping. So it's one of your major characteristics. The second one, the farther away the isoquant is from the origin, the better it becomes. That's there's the curve, are you good? So the farther away is from what? The origin. Zero. There's the origin. The further away, the further away, meaning that the more it moves away from what the origin, the better what it becomes. The third one, two isoquants cannot cross each other. If they do, then the assumption of transitivity has been violated. But this and this, they are not supposed to cross each other. If it crosses each other, we call it, or we say they are. We see that the transitivity has well been violated. I could. They are not supposed to cross each other. It's part of what they are characteristic. Two isoquants cannot cross each other. If they do, then the assumption of transitivity has been violated. So, we also have the slope of isoquant. The rate at which we sacrifice or substitute capital for labor measures the slope of isoquant. And this is known as the marginal rate of technical substitution, MLTS. Which is given by changing capital, which is key, over changing labor is equal to negative marginal product of labor over marginal product of capital. We also have ISO cost. With the ISO cost, it shows the various combination of inputs that exhaust the total cost. That's the formula for ISO cost. Change in K over change in labor is called negative of price of labor over, ne over what? Price of capital. Okay. And that the long run, we also have output maximization, whereby we are going to join the ISO quant, which is this, to the ISO cost, which is that. I agree. So the objective is to maximize output. Q is equal to F to bracket capital and labor. So subject to the constraint, total cost. So this is the total cost function we are going to use in the question. Total cost is called price of capital 
times capital plus price of labor times labor. Okay. So this is the diagram for it. Now, let me explain it. The frame maximizes the horizontal side is labor. The vertical side is capital. The frame maximizes output in the long run at the point where the ISO point is tangential to the ISO cost. At the point, the slope of the ISO point is equal to the slope of the ISO point. So that's the ISO point, are you doing? Now, with the ISO point, it said it shows the variable combination of inputs that is all the frame total cost. So that's become the ISO cost. That's what we were trying to explain at this point. At, the, at that point, the slope of the ISO point is equal to the slope of the ISO cost. So the difference here, there's the ISO cost, there's the ISO point. They are equal, are you doing? So this is the formula we are going to use. So we join that of ISO quant and that of what? ISO cost to get what? This. In order to find for what? Output maximization. So this becomes our final formula we are going to use. Marginal rate of technical substitution is equal to marginal product of labor over marginal product of capital is equal to marginal is equal to price of labor over price of capital or Marginal product of capital is equal to price of capital over marginal product of labor is equal to what? Price of labor. So you can decide to use this or decide to use that. But remember that if you are picking marginal product of labor to be your top one, it should equal to your price of labor. You can't put marginal product of labor here and put price of capital here. No, it's wrong. It needs to be in a linear order. So you will then move to solving what questions based on the long run. Then you see how we do it.